After winning the Golden Bear at the Berlin Film Festival in 2021 for Bad Luck Banging or Looney Porn, Radu Jude is back with a new movie, a near three-hour experience called Do Not Expect Too Much From The End Of The World. He knows his work isn't for everyone, and frankly, he likes that. Hi, Radu. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for uh, for the invitation. No, of course. Uh, congratulations on uh, Do Not Expect Much From The End Of The World. It's the film with the title that I keep on forgetting some of the words in it. Yeah, but it's okay. It's a, it's a, if you remember one of them, one of the words or Close two enough, of the words, huh? it's enough. Okay, okay. Yes. So I went to the screening the other um, the other day, and <coughs> firstly, it's a, it's a really amazing piece of work, and from my perspective, I think it's uh, it's it's very funny, political, wild, surprising, unique, and then about. Two thirds of the way through, you you stop and you introduce a montage of tombstones alongside the uh, a particularly dangerous Romanian road. And around me, something very strange started happening in the cinema. Initially, people were very respectful and kind of solemn. And then as it went on, they started to fidget. And someone behind me, kind of laughed a bit and then someone shushed them. And I got the feeling by making this choice, you had done something strange and transformative and unsettling to the audience. And I wondered if that had been your goal. Yes, yeah, I, 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 yes. Uh, or, or, or maybe it's, it's, it's something that I accept it uh, as a possibility because of course when you do a kind of things like that which is let's say not based on uh, it's not that often that you see this kind of thing in cinema you don't know how the reaction it is because you don't have a previous experience or you d- didn't see it in a previous sure. work of others so you can say oh this will provoke this reaction and that will provoke that reaction so um, but uh, uh, since the film was um, somehow uh, organized like a more um, free style uh, uh, or free composition film it's it's more free in the composition i i had the feeling that to introduce a serious silent documentary film of like four minutes somebody in the press conference they said oh this scene of 10 minutes or i said well it's not 10 minutes it's four he said yeah but i did felt like 10 <laughs> i said well I, I, so i'm sorry but it, <laughs> it was only four um i i wanted to to, to put it there first of all for for very serious reason because the film is is always balancing between serious and non-serious and that's a very serious moment and and i wanted just to show that this shadow of death that's around the main characters all the time sometimes gets 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 real uh, and, and 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 we joke and we we are making fun and 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 uh, everything else but in the end things can go go uh, um terrible and and uh, and that was the reason to put it there and then of course it was a kind of way to to how how do you do it you can show one you can show two you can show three but then i said well i, I filmed them all or most of all which were like 500 or 600 or something like that and then i i didn't edit i didn't put i put them in all of them into edit at some point and it was like nine minutes or something or 11 minutes i don't remember so then little by little we we uh we we limited to to a certain number neil young the film critic counted them yeah. during the screening and he sent me an sms saying 115. Uh, what, uh, which number do you think he started counting I think from the first day, uh, because he, I think he's accurate with uh, with accounting, or maybe I don't know. And um, and uh, yes, that was the reason. Now, if some people cannot stand four minutes of of that small documentary, uh, imagining that they consider it useless and and annoying, um, I can agree with that. But then, not to. S- suffer four minutes in, in yeah. for a, in, a, in a feature film and to go out and, and run okay it's everybody's uh, uh, right to to do it but i wouldn't do it i mean i think I w- it's the silence more than anything 
I think that people don't know what to do when yeah. they're all together in a space and yes. there's silence. Yes, yes. Well, they can, I don't know. Yeah, well, they, they can go but, out. But sure. I, think that's I, I don't know wrong with people going out. But I think it's a good thing that it makes people... Upset. Yes, yes, yes. And, and actually, I, 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 I'm always thinking, and I well, now, of course, it's a very complicated thing that the reception of any work of art or any work of any of, of every kind. But I'm always, I mean, more and more, I feel that the rejection... I take it in the optimistical way. It's a part of acceptance. It's the first step of acceptance. <laughs> I don't know. Like in love, some, sometimes someone who rejects you the most becomes the... You fall in love with that person or, she, or, she, or he falls in love with you sometimes. And it's, it's weird when it happens because you will say, oh, do you remember how we hated each other for, for many, many months or I don't know at the beginning. I, I, I think it happens like that. It happened for me. <coughs> One of the biggest uh, <coughs> discoveries were works of art that I, ha I used to hate sure. at some point in my life. And then little by little, I tried, I, I started to accept them. And sometimes they became... So you tend I to think, think about them more often. Yeah, I remember, you know, I think at some point I went, it was 2001. And I went to see a Godard film, in a uh, new Godard film back then, uh, Eloge de l'Amour in, in cinema. And I was so pissed off by the film and considered it such a horrible piece of crap that I said, I'm not going to watch a new Godard film never in my life. And actually 10, 11 years after, just by accident, I watched, uh, I don't know, one of his films. I was blown away. And then I watched another. And then little by little, Godard became probably the most important filmmaker uh, for me. And then I watched again, I loved all Amour and I found it brilliant. And not only that, but I even introduced it in the cinema taking because so you so you see in, in there in, is in, life after hate. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so, so look, I mean, I, I, I don't think I'm not comparing myself with, with Godard, but I'm just saying that I, I don't understand. have a problem with people hating the the films. I think I, I think first it's a very good feeling to have, and I really think people should hate more. I'm I'm, I'm not for for the calmness or for being kind. No, I think I think it's nice to hate. It's it's a big pleasure to hate something. At least this, you know, anger uh, is an en energy, right? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah um, to, 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 to be angry at something. It's the, the film itself kind of oscillates mostly between kind of two dual narratives. You've got the story of a kind of harassed production assistant uh, who's never allowed to sleep by her uh, horrible bosses. Um, and a kind of de facto sequel to a film I'm going to admit I've never heard of before. No, uh, it's, it's, it's not called good. Not even Angela for Romanians. Okay, fine. Called Angela Moves On. And I'm interested to know which story came first. They were mutually arising, like in Zen uh, Buddhism, they say. <laughs> no, actually, the there was this... Two main stories, the story of the driver and the story of the worker who's tricked uh, by the company. It's, it's, it's very old story, very, very old real story that I was witness to in one way or another, or I knew about them. Is, uh, it, is it true that you had to direct short films about workers you'd had? Yeah, uh, exactly. Like, and I really had the situation in the film with someone who had an accident like that, very on the edge with that barrier, which was hit really? by a car. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't invent that. Nobody could invent a situation like that. I think it's very difficult to find something which is such on the edge. I did. In a way. I did think it was a masterstroke. <laughs> yeah. No, no. It's just uh, the most. It was the masterstroke of some. Uh, so when did that happen to you? Fifteen, more than fifteen years ago. Because this is what I wanted to say. And the other story is the story of a, of a, of a production assistant. And I, yeah, I used to start as an assistant director and production assistant, the runner of doing all this. You know. Uh, uh, underpaid and undervalued jobs on a film set. So I, st I really started from, from, from the scratch, from, from, from nothing, from very down. And, uh, and it was because we were always working extra hours or unpaid extra hours and extra weeks and extra weekends and extra everything. Actually, I remember, you know, you had, you received these call sheets in the, and always it was an American film and always you, you, you work six days a week and we work like 14, 15 hours every day. And then it's the last uh, day and you had uh, one day rest. And the last day was always called extended day <laughs> because actually you would work 24 hours, you know, or 22 hours and you would go home and for that free day just... Can you remember any of the American films you worked on? 
Well, uh, that was a film that actually was never released properly called Vacuums by Luke Resson and Steve McNichols. It was the, the directors who, who made the uh, Stomp. It was a kind of, <laughs> right, okay, of yeah. this kind. And they, they did an American film with, uh, with um, who was, what's the name of the, 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 the actress that started the Me Too thing? Rose McGowan. Rose McGowan. Yeah. Rose McGowan. She, was, she was in it. And then it was a lot. I, I did, I worked a lot for, for second units. You know, and second units is even worse because it's, it's, uh, <laughs> It's not, nobody takes care of it. So, so you had these personal stories. Yeah, and, and, but, but to, to get back in the story, the first story is this driver that was a very young boy in the real story and, and he was forced to drive like that, you know, one more hour, one more hour, drink one more coffee, drink one more Red Bull, drink this, drink that, and tomorrow you have a rest. And, but he, he crushed, crashed, uh, fell asleep and crashed and died. You know, and, and you know that stay with me. I, actually, when I when I uh, heard of that, I was already directing advertising and television for, for to make a living, and uh, and when I heard that, I refused to go on any shoot uh, uh, far from 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 Bucharest, where, where 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 I'm living, and most of the crews are living. If the production doesn't offer hotel for the whole crew for the night, if it's more than I don't know, two hundred kilometers away or something like that. And of course, uh, some accept it, but most say no. And, uh, and, and so, so this two story stayed, stayed in my mind, uh, for a while, for, for many years and, and little by little, um, followed me somehow or made me feel guilty in uh, different ways or made me, but, but maybe also made me also consider that they are kind of symbolic. They are kind of very, uh, they, they, in these stories enter a kind of so many contradictions of the society that they become exemplary stories in a way. So then I said, well, maybe I should tell these stories or maybe I should choose one. But then I said, why choose one? Why not tell both? <laughs> and so how did you bring that in with the, you know, with the, the using the archive and manipulating the archive of this kind of, yeah. well, it's not a classic Romanian film, but a, uh, an old Romanian film. Yes, it's it's not really totally unknown, and I think it's discovered by younger critics as a kind of proto-feminist Romanian film. <laughs> but actually, I, when I decided to to make a film to to, to change the the genre the, the the gender of the driver into a woman, um, I, uh, I I looked for other road movies with 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 women in Romania, and I couldn't find it, but only this film. So then, little by little, I said, what if I would incorporate that and, and make the film more complex in a way, makes this description also like a kind of, uh, of essay about representation, how is a woman, it's a portrait of a woman in, in, in the contemporary society and in political freedom, that's important. And what is a, a, a portrait of a woman working as a driver in, in the communist Romania in, in a dictatorship, so with a lot of censorship. So and now you can compare the two sets of images and, and, uh, and I think it's also, you know, some, sometimes I, maybe I use a word that, that you will laugh uh, at me. I think it's poetical, <laughs> you know, you know, I really think that putting this together, it's a kind of poetry, which is non -poet, not non-poetical poetry, so to speak. I think it's a very brutal and very rough kind of poetry because to make this gesture of putting together these things, which are, it, it, it's a very uh, gra gratuitous gesture. Sure. It's not, you know, it, all, all advertising manuals tells you, well, you have to put things which are necessary. So someone would say, was it necessary to have that old film? Well, I said, no, of course not. You could take it out. But I think it, it, it creates a kind of poetical effect, which I wanted to have. It's, um, it's interesting because when you first, uh, you know, when you watch them first, obviously the contemporaneous stuff looks bleaker and sadder compared to the stuff filmed in the 1980s. And then, but then you manipulate that footage from the 1980s, you slow it down to a kind of ghostly crawl. Um, and I, I read somewhere that this is effectively you trying to point out little moments of aggression, poverty, sadness that kind of snuck past the senses yeah. back in the day. And, and they're very short. I mean, if you look them in the real, uh, at the normal speed of the film, then it's, you know, it's one second and it's gone. And There's it's an gone amazing one of a man looking with total disgust. Yeah, and yeah, rage yeah, with on his even face. a rage. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that rage, you know, you may maybe then that the rage of the 1989 revolution. So you could feel it, you could see it. If, 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 if you were a censor or if you were, you know, uh, you would look at that 
that image and slow it down and you will say, oh, something is going to happen, I think, if you if you take cinema seriously in a way. Well, there's, I mean, it's and he's by far and away not the only male character to get angry at a car inside the film. I mean, the you know, the image that the you kind of build of what it's like to be a woman driving through those streets is it's pretty hellish. Yes, yes. But of course, uh, somebody asked me, is this uh, portrait of Bucharest true? Or, and I said, well, you know, it's very difficult to, to, to assign this truth value, like, like in, in classical philosophy, to, to a film. But now, even using the common parlance, the common uh, language of that, I would say, yes, it's true, but it's, it's true because it's filtered by a camera and of, of, a, of, a, of, of, of an author of the film. So other people can make another type of film about Bucharest and the uh, Tourism office would make another kind of film, and uh, but you but you clearly are interested in this film about masculinity. Um, yeah. uh, you know, there there are multiple times where there seems to be a bit of an obsession about the death of famous people. You know, where there's Bourdain, there's Godard, there's Robert Louis Stevenson, there's Goethe, there's That's Salman weird. Rushdie, even though he didn't actually die. That's weird. I didn't think of that. It's true. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, I didn't think of that because some appeared. Uh, they were not. Uh, they were, I, I think the only one which was uh, supposed to 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 be there. Uh, and, and because this film is also a film about the construction of images a little bit, in a way. Uh, uh, then I, I wanted someone telling the story of the death of of uh, of the actor from Blow Up by Antonioni called uh, David Hemmings, and and is is exactly the way that the camera or assistant told it to us because he died on a sidewalk in Bucharest or some, 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 something like that, shooting a film. And that guy said, oh, so it was this old guy. I don't know this David Hemmings guy who fell fall down. And he said, so, you know, it, it was really a very violent way to tell this story of the of, 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 of a death of a man. And, and you know, you, you, you could just think about how, how how it's a very metaphysical feeling to say, yo, you're so famous. You're the guy from Blow Up and you die uh, on a sidewalk in Bucharest under this, the 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 eyes of this guy who says, wake up, pups, what the fuck are you doing? Wake the fuck up, wake the fuck up, you know? And then he was angry, not because, I mean, not because the, die, the, the guy died, that the, the David Hemmings died, but because he's, they didn't get paid yeah. and sent home and they lost the contract. And uh, and of course I can understand him. I mean, he had kids, he had some, some. Well, what do you do if, you, if your job, your regular job is that one? And they say, oh, David Hemmings died, a, a big star died, but now go home without, without a payment. Say, oh, you motherfucker, why did you fucking die in that on my shift? <laughs> no, so to speak. I mean, it's Sorry a, to you, but this, this was the language he used. I'm quoting them. Sure. Uh, I mean, it's another example. But, but, but the others, the others, I don't know, they appeared because I, I let the film to be crossed by, by what happened around uh, in, in, the, in the moments of shooting the death of Queen, you know, and then uh, the death of, uh, I don't know who else is mentioned there. It's just because Godard, who just committed assisted suicide when we, when we shot. Uh, so, I, so I let the film to be, yeah, and, yeah, and it's a lot about death of people. I don't, I, well, maybe, maybe I'm looking. It's an obsession a little bit. Fair enough. I mean, may, maybe I'm looking too much into this as well, but I no, couldn't no. help notice that there are, the, the film operates kind of, at least at the very start, very much in the kind of, in the shadow of two very famous English people who own Romanian estates, Andrew Tate and King Charles. <laughs> yes, it's true. true. And I, I wondered if you were making a cultural comparison between the two. Oh, you ask me too, 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 too much, too, too much and, and it's a very mean question in a way, because I actually, I, I like King Charles in a way. I think he's funny and I think he's, I don't know how his politics is in- But he loves in, Romania. He, he loves Romania, actually. Yeah. He has, he yeah. has a, a, a villa, a, a small house in a village. And of course, it, it's always, it's very ridiculous, but also, you know, very moving to, to see this uh, naivete of some people in, in Romania. <clears throat> It's exactly I put the mother of the main character to to express exactly what you what you hear when 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 the queen died and he became king and people, and people immediately said oh so he will take care of Romania you know he's he's someone who has a house here he loves Romania so now he will really be kind with us and give us a lot of things and and uh, yeah of course it's 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 uh, I'm I'm not judging that I mean I, well it's ridiculous <clears throat> but it's also 
I don't know, moving in a way. More, more so, about, but about Andrew Tate, uh, it's funny because we shot in September last year. I don't think, did you knew or know about him back then or was it famous back then? Uh, yeah, but I'd been working on a documentary about him for ages. So I'd ah, known about him for a while. Okay. So maybe you can tell something to my kid who's here with me. He's 18 and he's kind of like him a lot. No way. Yeah. You gotta have a word. Really? I mean, it is. Yeah, shit. <laughs> I, because, because this, this is how I, I, I heard about it, like two years ago. My son said, oh, he's, this guy is amazing. I want to be like him. I said, he's an idiot. Did you, did you show your kid the film yet? Uh, he, he, he didn't want to go. He said, ah, no, no. How long it is? I said, two hours, 40 for me. You got a clockwork orange him, man. I cannot force him to go, you know, it's, uh, yeah. and then this is how I found about Andrew Tate. And, and then we just mentioned, him, but, but, but then someone said, and I asked Ilinka because, you know, Ilinka created this avatar as a toxic guy, uh, imbecile, uh, like three years ago. Really? Yes. I and did not it, know that. it didn't have any, any connection with Andrew Tate, basically. She didn't know who he was uh, back then. Like, like me, I didn't know. So I said, so, you know, it's really funny because everybody says, oh, that's modeled by, uh, on Andrew Tate and actually it's not but you know I think it's it's a kind of collective subconscious that created that so why was she doing when was she doing that she she she, she did it uh, in the pandemic she started to doing uh, because she's a, she's an actress and she created that avatar in, in, to caricaturize this kind of idiot this kind of you know I mean it's brilliant I think it's brilliant yeah and I liked it so much and and then you know it, it was interesting to see that uh, but that's of course very, very very much connected to the world of culture the world of theater as well many, many of theater critics or I don't know this kind of people who were accusing her of being vulgar and you know if you're a real actress you don't this kind of shit it's good you to know. be vulgar yeah i love someone's it. gotta do it's, it it's 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 great it's 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 one of the few weapons that remains to to piss people off and it's an honest reflection of the world around us yeah of, of course but more than that it's, it's still something in vulgarity in, in, in that, that 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 sometimes aggresses some some kind of people and i like that a lot well i yet. mean there's a, there's a very <laughs> kind of refined vulgarity in the in the last scene of the film where um all the vulgarity is corporate vulgarity and it happens off screen uh it's a, it's kind of a it's a remarkable set piece it goes on i'm gonna guess 25 minutes oh uh, no it's uh almost 40. almost 40. well that's i mean so there's one shot of one family with a few people moving in and out screen. And I think that's what everyone will leave talking about it. Um, did you always know that that was going to be like that? When oh, you no, 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 not, not at all. And actually I cast a lot of actors uh, and I wanted to make a scene with a lot of choreography, you know, like to make a bravura theme, scene. And then I, I had the feeling that it's very lame to do it like that. And anyway, I couldn't make it. It felt I, I, it's going to be very bad. And then I had this idea, what if I do it like, like, like inspired by one of my models in filmmaking, who's uh, Andy Warhol as a filmmaker. Vinyl, it's like a 60 minutes film based on the Clockwork Orange before, uh, before uh, Kubrick. And yeah, it's much better it than Kubrick. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. And then he was shooting, you know, in this long uh, takes because he was just loading the camera with 33 minutes uh it was a 16 millimeter oricon camera with 33 minutes uh, rolls mm -hmm. and the moment it, it would start rolling he, would, it, he will never stop it and that was the film basically or half of the film so how many takes did he one you did one take no no he did one, no no, no i'm asking I mean, how many I mean, takes i did i did, uh, I did uh, one rehearsal in one day the next day i did two takes and i kept one half from the first and i knew in the weather report that next day might rain this is what i was gonna ask <laughs> and i said okay let's do one tomorrow uh, hoping that it might rain and we captured exactly the, the only moment that it rained uh, it's completely perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I said, which should I uh, choose? And then I didn't want people to say, oh, it's a bravura piece of 30 minutes or I don't know, 40 minutes. So I, 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 I there is a cut, a very oh, cut there in, in the middle, but you, you might not, not I don't think it. I noticed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And then um, when's the film going to be released in Austria? 
And <laughs> ah, I hope I hope it. I, I think. Uh, well, I am not allowed to say, but I, I probably it will be in a festival in 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 the autumn, and then I don't know if it will be released <laughs> because it's got an interesting antagonistic uh, relationship with with the Austrians, and of course Nina Hess is in it, which is amazing. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, actually, it's funny because uh, there's a lot of anti-Austrian resentment in Romania, which happens immediately after the shoot. Because Austria opposed Romania getting into the Schengen space. Oh, maybe they heard about your film. I, I no, 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 for sure not. I, I, I think it's. I don't know what's the reason for that. If it's, uh, but uh, but uh, because you know how it is in this kind of European decisions, it has to be unanimous. Yes, of course. So yeah. if it's one country that's against, so it was always Netherlands. Yeah, it was. And uh, and and actually, it was based on nothing. They just just rejected it uh, uh, like that. So it was all of a sudden everybody said, "Oh, fucking Austrians!" And and then when I showed the the films, they, well, this happened. I saw I know in December, but I shot in September. What, what and they we, showed some people the film and said, "Oh, you 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 you, you took this you summed it Austrian up. thing." But now I said, "Well, no, it was before." I mean, what, one of my favorite scenes in the whole film is the Zoom call, which is completely amazing and has the best executive note uh, that I've uh, ever heard. When the executive comes in and just says, "I have one word for you." Emotion, emotion, and yeah. leaves. Um, that's that's it's happened to me. You know, we were there. We were, say. Yeah, you cannot invent. I mean, I don't think I could invent that. We we're doing a commercial for a, preparing a commercial for a famous uh, mo mo mobile phone um, com com company. I mean, not mobile phones. The the, the operators. Sure. The, yeah. The telecom company. Telecom right. company. And we were discussing there, and the guy just opened the door and said, well, "Where is my director?" I said, "Here." I'm glad to. I said, "I have one word for you: emotion." And then she went out. <laughs> <laughs> and felt so. I said, emotion, what is on? And then his his uh, <laughs> second in command, so to speak, his assistant said, "Oh, this means he wants close ups." <laughs> I said, oh, "Okay." <laughs> Uh, no, I've been in lots of meetings like that as well. I thought it completely nailed it. It was great. Um, we're, we're, we're done for time, but um, look, I think it's a really exciting film. I, I, I discovered you like a lot of other people with your last movie, Bad Luck Banging, which I also think is a fantastic piece. And I'm Thank interested you. to see how this goes out in the rest of the world. Well, fingers crossed. Let's see. You know, if it's good, it's good. If it's not good, it's good as well. So. All right. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much.